Hey guys, Roby here from the Divi Engine team. Hello and welcome to the Divi Form Builder documentation series. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create a simple contact form using the Divi Form Builder plugin. Definitely check out our documentation at help.diviengine.com for a bunch of articles that will help you sort out most of the common issues or guides on how to use the Divi Form Builder. Now for more complex issues that might come up, definitely don't hesitate to contact the Divi Engine support team and somebody over there will be sure to help you out as soon as they can. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so before using the Divi Form Builder, we need to download and install the plugin. So to do so, we go to the back end of our Divi Engine account. We're going to go ahead and click on My Downloads. And as soon as that loads, you will see all the plugins that you've purchased in the past. You'll just scroll down to the Divi Form Builder and then click the green button in the right hand column. Make sure to save this in a location that you'll easily find in the next step where we go ahead and install the Divi Form Builder plugin. Okay, so now on the back end of our Divi site, we're going to go over to Plugins, Add New, and then Upload Plugin. And now we're going to choose the file from that location where we had just downloaded the Divi Form Builder plugin. We're going to select the file, we'll click on Open, and then on Install. Once that's finished, let's make sure to activate the plugin and then we'll add the license here in the next step. Okay, so to add your license to Divi Form Builder, all you need to do is go on the left hand side here and under Divi Engine, select Divi Form Builder License. You'll see the blank spot right there. That means you don't have a license entered or associated with your install yet. So we need to go retrieve that. And to do so, we go to the dashboard of a Divi Engine account and we click on the My Orders button here in the left hand column. And when the screen comes up, all we need to do is click on Manage License. And now you'll see a screen with all the licenses to all your purchased Divi Engine products. You can either just go down to the, the Divi Form Builder and select the license there, or you can generate a new one with the key generator at the bottom. Now to enter that license, back on the back end of a Divi site, we're going to go to the same location. Divi Engine and then the Divi Form Builder license. We'll just paste the key in there and save it. And now you're all set and we can move on to actually building the form. Okay, so now it's time to add the Divi Form Builder module to the page where we'd like to add one of our new Divi forms. Now I've got a page open here that's ready to accept my Divi Form module. So you can use whatever page you like, create a new one, it's up to you. You're going to start off by clicking the gray plus button to insert a module to the page. And I'm just going to type in form here. Now you'll see a few different options pop up here, the standard Divi form builder. But we're going to select the one that starts with dot form and add that to the page. With our module added, let's take a look at the content area here. At the top, you're going to see the fields. Now we're going to get to that a little bit later in this video. Let's start by looking at the main options. Now the first part we're going to want to put in here is the form title and a form ID. We're going to be building a simple contact form. So we're just going to type in simple contact for the form title. And then we'll just copy and paste that for the form ID. And then we just select the form type by clicking the drop down here and you'll see a ton of different options. We're going to cover each of these options later in the documentation. But for the purposes here, this is just going to be a contact form. Okay, so we've got the email options up next. Now, if you want your form to send an email to the administrator or even the person that submitted the form, this is where you're going to configure that stuff. Now, like most other WordPress plugins, the Form Builder does not handle emails directly. We use the standard WP mail function that is provided by WordPress to send any emails. We do, however, encourage you to use the SMTP function, which usually is the best way to guarantee email delivery. And there are a bunch of resources online that can help you set that up, as well as plugins that you can install on WordPress that will help you achieve that. Scrolling down, we get to the notices options. Now, if you're tired of those default messages that pop up, if a form is submitted successfully or even unsuccessfully, we got you with that one. With the Divi Form Builder, we allow you to create Divi layouts that can be injected anywhere on the form to customize the look of successfully or unsuccessfully submitted forms. We have another section with a video on this that we'll be releasing a little bit later, but definitely follow along with that if you want to learn how to go ahead and inject these layouts for successful and unsuccessful form submissions. 
Now, another great feature of the Viewform Boulder is the ability to automatically redirect your user to another URL based on whether the form was submitted successfully or unsuccessfully. Now, for that, we'll use this redirect section right here. Now, imagine that you have created a page for a successful submission or a failed one. We'll just put that domain in right here. So just my domain forward slash success or my domain forward slash failed if you had that set up already. Now here in the extra options section, you find another bunch of cool features in how users interact with your form and what they do. A couple of these features are the ability to submit the submitted forms to the database. You can integrate with Bloom by Elegant Themes and you can use the select to drop down select option. If you want to save the submissions to the database, then you select this option right here and you can view the submissions at Divi Engine and then Divi Form Entries. Select to is a particular way of using the select dropdown, which you'll see when you add a field item. Here's an example of select to in action on their homepage. If you'd like to use it, then you can enable it here, but note, you would also need to enable it on the individual field items. The last integration we have here on the extra options panel is the Bloom integration. Bloom is an elegant themes plugin that you can easily use to integrate with CRM systems and different newsletter systems like MailChimp or, or SendGrid and so forth. You can find out more on this by checking the documentation or checking out the link in the description of this video. Divi Form Builder even offers spam protection options here. Nobody likes spam, and we've created Divi Form Builder with simple mathematical spam filters in there, the one that you kind of know from the regular Divi um, anti-spam capture. Or you could utilize something like Google Recapture, which is probably the most effective way. For this form, we're just going to use the simple math recapture, but for more on our spam options, definitely check the link in the description or check out the Divi form builder documentation at help.diviengine.com. After completing the main settings of the content tab, you will need to add and customize form fields that relate to a contact form. Examples of field types that you might want to use in a contact form could include, but not limited to, an input field, text area field for a little bit more text, an email field, a checkbox with a bunch of options, a radio with a bunch of options, an image upload field, a file upload field, and then also the select dropdown and the date fields. In our example today, we'll be creating an input field for the user's name. So the field we're going to be adding is the type of input field. We're going to give the field a title, so we're going to say full name for that, and then the field ID will also be full name. And just again, let's make sure that we select the input field type here. Okay, now we also give you full control over the layout here. Now for this example, we just want a full width input field, but you can change it into half. You can do all sorts of different things. And then also for the placeholder text, we'll just put in full name. Okay, now you'll also notice the mapping option section here. We can't use that currently in a normal contact form. It typically is only right now for the front end submission. But in the next big version of the Form Builder, we're going to be adding auto mapping here to auto add values in the future. But that is a placeholder for features yet to come. Okay, continuing on, we have conditional logic. Conditional logic enables you to create a dynamic form. For example, you can set it so that only certain fields show when others have been activated. Now you can see a lot more about conditional options on the link that's in the description of this video. And that'll teach you a lot more about conditional logic and how to use it. We're not going to be using that in our example form here, but it's something to be aware of and something that's a very powerful tool for creating dynamic forms. Okay, with our form completed, let's save it and it's time to go check out on what it looks like on the front end of the site. You'll see my input field here asking for the full name as a placeholder text and then the submit button. Let's see what happens when I type my name and hit the submit button. Okay, great. You can see that our form submitted successfully, albeit with the boring standard notice. But remember, we're going to be tackling that in a later installment within the Divi form builder documentation. Let me just quickly show you the submitted data on the back end of the site so that you know where you can retrieve that. So we're just going to go to Divi Engine on the left here and then Divi Form Entries. Now, in the real world, you'll probably want to add something like an email field to this as well as, you know, really styling the form out a little bit. 
And all of this you'll learn in some of the other installments yet to come in the Divi form builder documentation. And that's it folks. Um, I hope you found this intro and overview of building a basic simple contact form with the Divi form builder helpful. And as I mentioned, this is just the start of our journey here on getting to know the Divi form builder. We'll be releasing a lot more documentation for you to check out. So definitely go to the documentation site at help.diviengine.com to answer most of your questions. But if you do find more complex situations, as always, don't hesitate to contact the Divi support team and somebody's going to help you out and get your issues sorted as soon as possible. And with that, that's it from me, guys. This is Roby with the Divi Engine team. Thank you for sticking with me. Bye for now.